The labor system that took shape in the late 19th century developed coercive means to ensure that cotton remained king. It was called convict leasing. Get arrested on a minor charge or a trumped up charge, you could find yourself locked up and then hired out to a corporation bidding on inmate labor. The pipeline from prisons to profits in this country has deep roots. The aftermath of slavery was in some ways worse than slavery itself. Unlike before, when someone who owned you, driving you too hard was counterproductive because you would lose your investment. Convict leasing was different. You could get them cheaper, and if you actually drove them to death, there was more where that came from. In the 13th Amendment, which ends the institution of slavery, of course, there is a loophole. Convicts who have been convicted of a crime, they actually can be forced to work for free. In Alabama in 1850, 99% of the people who were incarcerated were white. In Alabama by the 1880s, 85% of the people incarcerated were black. So we could have a debate about how many of those black people were actually innocent, or we could have a conversation about the use of the criminal justice system to target both the innocent and the guilty alike. That continues all the way to the present, where even today, about just under 40% of the nation's prisoners are black, and yet the African-American population is about 13%. They are snatching up bodies everywhere to fuel this system. The idea in which more money can be made out of their incarceration is still very much part of our criminal justice system.